Hello everybody, this is Bill McFadden from TomePure.com and in this video we're going to look at the shorts articulation with the automatic rhythmic pattern in modern scoring strings. And one of the first things you want to do for, for the rhythmic patterns and the shorts is to make sure that you're using your short mics, or sorry, your close mics. They actually sound a little bit better than, say, your stage or mix for the different short articulations. And when you're in the, uh, the menu in your shorts, then you just click on this little icon here and then the patterns will show up and we have a menu we have um, zigzag patterns for the ostinatos we also have the ostinato tool which allows you to put in your own patterns and we'll get into that but initially let's go ahead and look at some of these rhythmic presets. For example, Fanfare is the first one. Now, in order to get the engine to work, you have to hit the power that will activate the engine. And so let's go ahead and I'll play a C minor chord. Your mod wheel also gives you increased volume. So that's the fanfare articulation. Now over here on the side, it, it tells you what rhythmic pattern is going to be selected. So you want to select score or score sync for these patterns to see what's going on. Now the difference is score sync will move the articulations from staccato, staccatissimo, spiccato, or martelle, depending on the uh, shortness of the note. And then if you just select score, you can select your own articulation by moving the slider. Here's staccato. So you see that's a little bit too long. So there's the fanfare. Then there's a fanfare extended. And then we have the sixteenths. Now what's really great about this engine is you can record the MIDI and drag it in to other instruments. For example, let's take this little pattern right here. I hit record over here. And then I click record again. Then I have this drag MIDI option. Drag it to this piano I have here. And then listen to what we've got. So it takes that same MIDI that from this pattern in it allows you to capture it. So you could take these ostinato patterns and put them in other strings, or you could actually put them in brass or woodwinds. So basically the ostinato engine will give you, because of the MIDI capture, will give you the ability to use these patterns in different sections of the orchestra. So let's go ahead and delete that for now. Let's take a look at another so we have the 16ths, here's the 16ths ramped. So you have your velocity, you have your note length down here, you have your rests in here. So, and then we have to hit the power or you can hit the sustain pedal, which also invokes the power engine. So that's 16ths ramped. So notice we have varying velocities here. And then, uh, then there's the art, the automatic rhythmic tool, ostinato, they call it. Mm -hmm. 
Now notice these three lines show up. It enables you to actually make your own arpeggios. Now watch what happens if I hit two notes. It goes down to two. And if I hit four notes, it's changing the pattern. And suppose I hit five notes. I'll go ahead and... Uh, and even six notes. And you could actually change what these patterns are. For example, I could go ahead and... So this, these reset, represent notes of the chord. So I can click here and say do a, like an arpeggio from the top note down to the bottom note and then going back up again. And then back down again. And that's for a five note chord, one, two, three, four, five, six note chord. So let's go ahead and uh, play a chord, six notes. Okay, maybe I can uh, do a six note. This won't sound that great, but I'll do, try and do six notes with one hand. Two down here, three, four, five, six. Now, while I'm doing that, I'll capture the MIDI. And then I'll drag it. Now let's hear what that sounds like. So you see, it's quite a useful tool for creating your own MIDI, creating uh, sequences from even in this case, six note chords. So let's take a look at another. So we looked at the Art Arsenal. Let's look at the Triplet March. And then power it. And then we have Sparse Fanfare. Now with any of these patterns, we can go ahead and use the ARP feature. So, so that's play order. Let's go up. So it's going from the lowest note to the highest note. And I could change it in here as well. So this is just a score. So you can change these things around and then you can save the preset if you want. So for example, if I, uh, let's see, we're actually in the sparse fanfare. So if I were to go copy current preset and then, whoops, okay. Anyway, what I was going after is paste over um, the fanfare. So you can save over fanfare, save over fanfare extended and so on. And you also have these blank presets. So if I go into, let's say preset, well, they're not totally blank, but they're, they're basically just quarter notes and quarter note rests. So preset 15, same thing. So I can change these up. So we're on preset 15, maybe I want, okay, let's get into the editor a little bit. So maybe I want to change the quarter note to say an eighth note. So here's our eighth note here. 
So there we go. And now it's just automatically advancing. So let's do a, an eighth note rest. Now, the way you do that is you hit the Alt key on Max. I believe Control key on PC. But so if I hit the Alt key and then I hit the eighth note, then I get an eighth note rest. So eighth note, Alt, eighth note, eighth note, Alt, eighth note, Alt. So I changed the pattern into a eighth note pattern and let's listen to that. Okay, the power tool's on, so after then I'll get out of the ostinato tool. If I get out of the ARP tool, and then if I go copy current preset, and then let's say run 15. So if I go save over preset 15 i'll give it the same name save so now if i go back to 14 we have the quarter note pattern and if i go to 15 now we have the eighth note pattern as opposed to And as you saw, we had a lot of options. We can use 16th note triplets, 16th notes, 32nd notes, quarter note triplets, half note triplets, eighth note triplets, and so on, as far as rhythmic elements of our patterns. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, the triplet march. And again, we can go ARP. And then we have the sparse fanfare we looked at, newsroom. Ostinato Bakery. We have some 5878 eight, triplet. And again, with any of these patterns, we can uh, change up, make them into arpeggios. Of course. You have to click on, this has to be highlighted for it to take effect. And so you can use these in conjunction. You can have another engine and then have one going down, one going up. And it, it gets some rather intricate rhythms going on with more than one voice. And again, at any time, if you want to see what's going on in the MIDI, you can just hit record. And then hit record again, drag the MIDI. Let's see, I'll put it right here and delete the previous MIDI. And so here we go. And if at any time you're wondering exactly what's going on, what, what down means exactly, what up down means exactly, and what does zigzag up mean, well, then you can go, I'll go ahead and pick a simple pattern, the one we just did with the uh, eighth notes. Power on.
I mean, if you just go by ear, it's going from the first note Get rid of this MIDI here. And then you can capture the MIDI and see it precisely. So if you had any doubt, just go ahead and hit record. And then hit record again, drag the MIDI. And then listen. And then, of course, in, uh, in Cubase, we can select, go back to the beginning, and then open the score editor. And there's your notes. So the first to the fifth to the third, first fifth to the third. So you can see exactly what MIDI notes are being generated. There we go. So, so we have the ostinato tool. Now we saw that we can actually create sequences. Now this, we did a six note sequence. Now suppose I'm just doing two notes, then I can just go ahead and maybe make a sequence with these two notes, alternate back and forth, like so. Now, when I play three notes, then it changes. Now, it's not making any difference, because notice I have a rest at every other beat. Okay, so it would probably be more... Let's go ahead and change the rest into something else. Okay, so we'll put the rest. Let's put a 16th note in there in the rests. So we have this new pattern now. Make the sixteenth knot there. Now notice it's only going to affect two note chords. If I do three note chords, then I have to enter a diff I have to enter a pattern in for those. That's preset 15, so I can um, save over preset 15 to save those changes. And you can give it another name too, but I'll just keep it. And we could do the same for a four note chord. Notice we have a blank slate for four note chords. And then for five note chords, still a blank slate. Six note chords right now, we have a blank slate as well. So you can change in the, uh, the different note sequences using these rhythms. And of course, you can always use the ARP tool and use these sequences right here. So I'm using a three note chord. So you can hear it's doing a different pattern with a four note chord. And if I do a five note chord. And again, if you want to see what that is, you hit record. And then go ahead and drag your MIDI. So I'll delete that existing MIDI. 
drag it. Then I can uh, look at it in terms of actual notes. And notice it's putting in, we're getting the rhythmic pattern as well that's being generated by this pattern, which you can see. So that pretty well covers most of the features of the rhythmic tool. And it's, as you can see, it's quite powerful. We can take the MIDI, we can alter it, and we can put it, we can capture it, and then we can put it in other orchestral sections if we want, and you can get some quite elaborate things going on. So this is Bill McFadden, signing off from tomepure.com. See you in the next one.